I believe His Grace would like to speak with us. <laughs> oh. How did you know? I didn't see you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Probably you can do better. Good morning. Yes, I thought so. Well, after billions of dollars spent and thousands upon thousands of commercials delivered, and I don't know how many mailers I have received, how many unsolicited phone calls I have received, on Tuesday we get to vote. In this state, it's the only day that you can physically go and vote unless you have asked for an absentee ballot in the past, you received it and you have gotten it back to them by whatever date they asked. This is it. This is the time when we tell them what we think because they have been telling us what they think for months and months and actually a couple of years. And if you are like me and like everyone else, you're tired of listening to them talk to us. Now they're going to hear from us. I received a text today with a little picture outside an Orthodox church that said, if you're tired and unhappy with the donkey, and you're tired and unhappy with the elephant, try following the lamb. The Lamb, of course, is Jesus Christ. Try following Him. Try to understand what He is telling us. And then when you go to vote, try to think who re represents you the closest. No one is exactly like me. No candidate represents me exactly. But there are candidates at different levels that are close to what I represent or I feel or I think we need. And the same is true with you. The trick is to figure out who that is and then if you choose, go and vote. Because you also have the choice not to vote. But if you choose not to vote, I'm not sure what you can complain about later. I mean, you can. Many people have never voted and they complain all the time. But this is the one time when they ask us what we think. And I believe it's a civic duty as a member of this state, of this country, to go and express my opinion on whatever is there asking for my opinion. Whether it's a candidate for a high office of the nation, if it's a candidate of our state, if it's a candidate of a local area, if it's a constitutional amendment. There are so many things that impact us every day that if we are given the opportunity to actually have an impact, we have to take that opportunity because not everyone gets the right to vote in the world. There are places where people wish they could vote and they can't. And here we have this right to this day. I don't know what will come in the future, but to this day we have the right to vote. I can't tell you who to vote for. I wouldn't tell you who to vote for. But I think all of us are smart enough to see what is in front of us and to go and vote with all our heart. And are they the best candidates? <laughs> I don't think so. But they are the candidates. And if we don't like it, maybe we should put our own names next time to run, to show something better. Again, I can't tell you who to vote for. I can't even tell you that you would be wrong not to vote. It's your choice. But we do have a choice. And so I think we should choose. Because if we lose the choice, 
we're going to be banging our heads against the wall saying, wow, we had the choice and we didn't do anything. We sat back and we came up with excuses like, my vote doesn't count. Really? I think we can find places in history where one vote changed everything. Do you know that in this country, at the very beginning, they were deciding what the official language of this country would be? And by one vote, English won. Do you know that if that one vote had gone in the opposite direction, the official language in this country would have been Greek? You didn't know that, probably. I know that, because I'm Greek. One vote changed something dramatic for us in the beginning. And even in other times in history, one vote decided something for the whole country. So your vote counts. Of course it counts. Your vote counts as much as the person next to you. No more, no less. But if you don't use the vote, you have lost something. Again, you may decide it's not worth voting. Okay, that's your choice. But Wednesday morning when you see the headlines, if we have them by then, I don't know yet, you cannot say, oh, I should have voted. It will be too late. And so go, if you can. Find all reasons to go. Because we have to show these young people here the importance of voting. Because in a few years, we're going to be dead who are older, and it will be their responsibility. It will be Kadath and Kira's job and Exenia's job. And your name? Abby? Abby's job. Did you notice that I picked four women? <laughs> I already talked to the guys inside. It's important. And some people will say it is a God-given right for us to be able to vote. Now, it never says in the Gospels that Jesus voted. Maybe it was not something they could do, because they could not. But he did say, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. The vote is part of Caesar. The same people that we are going to vote for will determine our tax. Remember, who is on the coin? Caesar was on the coin. And other things besides tax. 70% of the people say we are going in the wrong direction in our country. 70%. Well, what do you do when you're going in the wrong direction? You try to figure out how to go in the right direction. And I don't know what that means exactly, but I do realize that in our country on Tuesday, and all those who have already voted in other places, whoever wins is going to win not because we love them, but we hate the other guy more than we hate you. Wow. How tragic is that for our country? that we cannot vote for someone we love, but we vote against the other guy. And that's the only reason you get the vote. This is sad. And for our kids who are paying attention, they go, what are the adults doing? If you think for a minute they're not watching us, you're kidding yourselves. I asked Simeon inside, how does it look at your school for the election? Are y'all voting? He says, we will vote. How does it look? He says, it's close. 50-50. Sounds about right. 
And so every vote counts to make it 50 plus one. On Tuesday, I'm gonna walk across the street from the house. I live two doors down. Across the street, and I'm gonna go into the education center for the first time as a Pennsylvania voter. The last time I voted, I voted absentee in my home state of North Carolina. I had not been here long enough to count here. And so I got registered. And what was really nice for me was to see that the polling place was Christ the Savior Cathedral. And not just one polling place, but two polling places, two precincts are located across the street. Now, if we're good enough to let them use our buildings to vote, we better be voting too. For the third time, I can't tell you who to vote for, but I encourage you to vote. Let your voice be heard. Let your voice as an Orthodox Christian be heard. You have to see in our country that our voice is getting dimmer and dimmer. That somehow the Christian at large in our country is losing his or her voice. There are fewer of us too many of our younger people, 18 to 35, are not affiliated with any church. They're known as the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, not the monastics. That they don't even care to be affiliated with a church. That's dangerous. And that number continues to grow every day. It's the fastest growing group in America, the unaffiliated religious people. When they are unaffiliated with a church of some faith, then God is not part of their life. God is not part of their formula. And when God is out of the picture, you know what happens. Best of you go vote later so that I don't have to wait in a long line. <laughs> but I'll go and I'll stand in a line. I've done it before. When I voted in 2008, I stood in line for four hours in Charlotte with my neighbors, who I'd never seen before, most of them. I said, where do y'all all come from? I haven't seen you at the polling place in a long time. But it's a duty and a right. And I plan on expressing my opinion through the ballot. And then I'll sit there Tuesday night and watch the returns. And there are going to be some happy people. And there are going to be some sad, angry people. And the news media, their heads are all going to explode because they don't know what they're talking about. In the same state, Trump is up five, Hillary's up five. Well, how can that be? One of you is wrong, really wrong. And if we could only look back at all the things they said in the last year and go, you were such a <laughs> fool when you said that. But it's okay. It'll all be washed away by Wednesday morning. We will have voted, and then they will start talking about 2020. <clears throat> but then we do have the 2018 election. You know, they never leave us alone more than about 24 hours. Immediately, they will start on the next one. My sister said something last night that I thought was very poignant. They spend billions of dollars, she says, for a job that's $400,000 in salary in the White House. Can you imagine what we could do with $2 billion in our country if we didn't have to pay for all those TV ads? 
because that's where most of the money goes. Those TV people are making the cash. Think about that. Maybe we can change that one day too. And we have to pray real hard for that one. Because you're hitting somebody in the pocketbook. Know that I love you, I care for you, I pray for you. Our Steelers are doing okay. Maybe they'll make the playoffs, I'm not sure. I watch the Cubs in Cleveland play 10 innings the other night. I don't like either one of those two teams. The Cubs especially I don't like because they happen to play our Pirates about 25 times a year and this year they really pretty much abused us and kept us out of the playoffs. But they deserve it. One of those two teams had to win. They hadn't won in so long. But you see how the Lord toyed with them at the end. We're tied at the end of nine innings. And now I'm going to delay the game with some rain. I'm going to show you I'm still in control. And then the rain ended after about 15 minutes. And they finished the game. God is in control no matter what we do on Tuesday. He is in charge. This is his planet. We are his people. We're not his pets. We are his loved ones. He loves us. We should love him. And by extension, we should love our country. So fly the flag and go vote. I'll see you downstairs.